Up to this point, we've seen some fundamentals for creating stored procedures. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, Tom, you know, I don't really see the purpose of these stored procedures. Well, let me tell you what. It's about the looping capabilities. That's when you're going to go, oh, that's the only way I can kind of take SQL and loop through quite a bit of times. And now you're going to see exactly why we create the stored procedures. Daddy's bringing home the bacon because this is what it's all about, looping. Now, let me take and set you up here. First of all, I created a table called my log table as example number one because I'm going to insert some rows into that. The table must exist. You know, sometimes I've created stored procedures with derived tables in them or volatile tables in them. And when I compiled them, they said, those tables don't exist. And I go, yeah, exactly. That's why I'm going to create them here. Can't do it. You have to have a permanent table or a global temporary table that you insert select into. So I have created the table as a permanent table because we're going to insert into it. Now, let's look at the stored procedure. I'm creating the procedure, procedure name. I've got a begin and an end statement that I have given labels. I didn't have to, but I want to show you that I can. And I've called those labels looper and end looper. But here's where the rubber hits the road. I've got a loop it label, but it's got the keyword loop. And it's also got the keyword at the end of that, end loop, loop it. And that's how the stored procedure will know how to loop. Now, earlier on, we declared some variables. We learned how to do that. Here, I'm declaring a variable right away called counter, C-N-T-R. It's an integer. I gave it a default to start of a zero. Now, once I'm in the loop, I set counter equal to counter plus one. So the first time it comes in, it goes, I'm a one. Then I actually am going to say, if the counter is greater than five, then leave loop it. And it knows to end the loop. If not, it's going to do what I tell it to do, and I say, insert into my log table, counter, and then the time. And then it loops again, and it adds one to it, loops again, adds one to it, until it finally reaches the end of the loop because counter is greater than five, and that's the real purpose of great stored procedures. Let's review that one more time. One, we make sure the table already exists. I created it. Number two, we build that stored procedure. And notice in the keywords read, the words loop and end loop. That's the way loops are done, or at least one technique for them. Once I've created the stored procedure, I just call inserter 5, open paren, close paren, and the stored procedure runs. When I check on it a little later and select everything from my table, I notice there are five rows in it because I set that counter and I said, you run this each time and you keep looping until that counter is greater than five. We just saw a query that did a loop and I am showing that query again in the first procedure here. We said we're going to loop. At the end we have an end loop. We set our counter each time we come into the loop and we say that loop gets greater than five. Leave the loop. Now we're going to do the same thing in example number two except we're not going to use the word loop and end loop. We're going to use repeat and end repeat. How we get out of this loop is a little bit different. Notice here at the beginning we have the repeat and then we say until counter greater than four and that will tell the procedure when to leave. So these are two exact examples 
of how you can do looping. Loop and repeat. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. The next is Query Chameleon, a query tool looking to help your data adapt to any surroundings. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.